You can't put anything on top of this. Yeah. It's you. It's not technology. No, no, that's okay. It's right. You can check. Good check. So you, 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 if you want to see, you got to come over here, but. It's all right, it's all right. No worries, no worries. I, I don't have the table that long, but no, because I need to kind of like touch it um, this later. Put it on. Put it on. Long enough. It's all right. I'm, I'm just going to hold it and touch it. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I have 10 minutes and I'm not, I'm not sure whether I, I have a time to go through it, but basically I'm going to talk about the latest school things uh, in town, the ESP32. Uh, I believe uh, in my hands uh, they are the only one ever in Singapore. <laughs> All right, so um, not to show how much of, uh, how much you know about the, the evolution about the ESP32, but if you Google Hack a Day and uh, you follow uh, some of the ESP, uh, ESP8266 or ESP32 website, uh, this is by far one of the most uh, interesting project that is getting a lot of interest lately uh, simply because number one is uh, the ESP32 is built as a successor for the ESP8266. It has uh, something uh, that is more superior than the, the its predecessor. First of all, it is uh, it has a, it's a combo Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, chip you know, with dual core. The, the spec later I'm going to show it to you, uh, but you want to see how it looks like. This is the latest uh, incarnation by, uh, released by Expressive. It has a little uh, not MCU-like design, but uh, it apparently it's not built by not MCU, it's actually built by Expressive, but it is still a dev board, uh, so it is also open to a lot of uh, so-called redesigning and refinement. So this is actually the latest uh, dev kit uh, that Expressive have uh, give, given to uh, some of the major uh, players in the maker scene. You know, they like for example, Adafruit just had recently restocked the uh, uh, 32 Dev Kit C, so you can actually get it for I think 15 USD. But watch out, the <laughs> Korea is about 20 to 30 USD. Wow. Right, so it will really blow a hole in your pocket. Now, this is uh, something very awesome because. Uh, uh, not only that it promises uh, power and promises uh, superior function, um, it, it, it is going to be uh, a game changer. At least it's what is being uh, touted as and will be promised by Expressive. The only thing that is really uh, problematic at this point in time is that uh, while the hardware is really awesome, the software is uh, still under development. Here yeah, I will explain. Later. But this is just some of the key features. You can actually download, I mean, you can just Google, but I just want to tell you that uh, it has all this good stuff, uh, and basically um, it is something awesome. But from the software side, uh, they have made some changes which makes it very tricky for novice learners to get started. Uh, first of all, they have introduced uh, this uh, development framework called the ESP IDF. Now, in, in the past, when, when working with the ESP8266 uh, Expressive Release uh, non-OS SDK and the free RTOS SDK, and you know, somebody, I think from, from Expressive side, uh, people like Ivan created an Arduino core, and later on you have MicroPython, Lua, uh, and Rumor has it that like, people have even basic you know, running of the ESP8266. So that was actually very awesome because it actually allowed a huge community of uh, people to work on the ESP8266. But guess what? When uh, the ESP32 was announced last month, you know, they say that, hey, I'm going to be, I don't know, it is up finally, you know, and you can pre-order. Guess what? At this point in time, I don't think even you get the module, you get the board, you will, you will get to use it simply because uh, you know, the, the free RTOS uh, SDK, at least, that was being used for the uh, beta version, the, the Expressive actually stopped supporting it. In fact, they have kind of like killed this project and reboot with this new ESP IDF. The new ESP IDF is a new architecture. It has a, a, a flavor of free RTOS, but 
we are not too sure what is the direction which expressive is taking. It is is really really quite uh, uh, how do you say uh, confusing because considering that you know they have two awesome uh, sort of community that they could actually make use of to create uh, more projects for the 32, such as the Arduino and and as well as the, those doing free outdoors. But in this case, you know, uh, it is like rebooting, and at the same time, you know, you have a hardware ready to be going to the market, and then one month before that, you reboot everything. So at the status at this point in time, everybody on a, on a daily basis is updating and putting new things, uh, you know, online, and hope, hope to, you know, try to find the better ways to uh, make it more user-friendly. I'm going to also talk about the, um, the, this, this new board that I have, it's called the Nano 32. It is made by uh, two companies, called the, one is called Gravitech and the other is called Maker Asia. Uh, I kind of involved with them simply because both of them happens, or both founders happen to be uh, friends as well as uh, members of the Southeast Asia Maker Space Network. Uh, if you're not familiar with this company, no worries. Uh, Gravitech uh, is actually the designer for the Arduino Nano. So if you have the, if you are used to the Nano, it is actually designed by Gravitech. Okay, uh, i.e., it is made by Thai designers. Uh, Maker Asia is uh, started by uh, my uh, co-founder for, for my expert project. Uh, he is basically the guy who uh, helped to design the Espresso line. So basically, by combining forces. Uh, we created this new uh, abomination called the Nano 32. It is a first third party development board based on ESP32. It is very different from the uh, from this version of the ESP32 Dev Kit C for a couple of reasons. So I'm going to show you what are the differences. Uh, first of all, instead of using the module, uh, this Nano 32 uses the QFN package, okay, using the chip. Uh, instead of using trace, Ceramic, uh, trace antenna, this 32 uses ceramic. So there's a, a bit of difference in terms of uh, uh, between using um, the, the dev kit C uses CP2102, uh, this one uses FDDI. Okay? And if you can see where it's trying to go to, uh, um, one is made in China, and another is made in Thailand, Southeast Asia, the cost ultimately it leads to high, uh, uh, it leads to a higher cost. Good news is, uh, in two weeks' time, the makers of this board uh, will be in town for the Inno ASEAN Summit. Uh, they'll be bringing their stock. So if you, uh, if you want to get one of these, at least you know you don't have to pay uh, 20 bucks for extra FedEx you know, to get the dev kit C. You can actually try it out. It's quite awesome. I've uh, been playing with it. It's, it's quite neat. Lah. Right, so um, I thought it would be nice to just show you how to what we can do with it. So I'm just going to kind of like let's do a one arm bend it. <laughs> I really don't know where to put this man. Yeah, because I, I, need, I, need, I, need, I, need, I realize I need hands to tie. Some red board has a Yeah, but I don't think I can take it out. What is it? Alright, just to show you, uh, this basically uh, um, the the guys who built the M32 has kind of produced some uh, sample codes so that it allow people to kind of like uh, use some of the sample codes and create uh, stuff like you'll be very familiar with. For example, the the, the first thing that we always like to do to check whether or not things are working is always the blink. And um, in order to kind of like create or compile the the code, let me show you where the the code, okay. The code is hidden in this uh, so-called folder called uh, main. Right? It's not going to give you a glimpse of the code. All right? It's a free archive, C, you know, uh, and most of the API we actually couldn't figure it out. But basically, this is how the code looks like. So I. Uh, All right, and basically we need to make the file 
and then to flash it, I need to kind of like uh, press on one of it over here. You see, this always happens uh, whenever I do this demo. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> this always happens. Uh. Okay, I don't know what, what, what went wrong. Yeah. 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 This is the second time, you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. Then I need to run it. So when I just press Income, and basically you can see my LED blinking. All right. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, so what else I can I can I can show you? So for example, uh, let's do this. Um, let's get the the sensor, okay, zero one one zero HD, so same thing. Oh, okay. let's just hold, hold, okay. Oh, and that door. What happened? Temperature sensor. Okay. Yep. There's one. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I probably have time for one last uh, demo. Uh, let's hope it works. Let's create a, a web server. Starting, it is trying to use uh, Luther's uh, one of the <laughs> AP address. You know. So later, you later on you will see an an an, 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 an uh, IP address if it is connected. Okay, it takes a while, and once the IP address is connected, you can actually open your browser and then just key this IP address in your browser. Hey, okay, you never on your. No, I, I no, because I have, I'm actually hot spotting <laughs> this to the. Uh, uh, okay, so one seven two. Okay, so if I can just go over to over here. Okay, if I just click over here. Oh, you don't have Wi-Fi. I don't have Wi-Fi. Ten point one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Now my I am <laughs> I have no no worries. So because I know demo I got a slide, you see? <laughs> so if you if you actually if you actually try it, you'll be able to see this. So I actually prepared slides just in case the demo doesn't work. All right, so I come prepared. So obviously I'll just show you the the how you blink the LED, the temperature sensor, 
create a web server. Uh, you can even do Wi-Fi scan. Uh, you can even do the, the Bluetooth L. Okay, these are just some very really simple examples just to, to show you that, uh, first of all, uh, the kind of development that people are doing is just trying to communicate, just write software to communicate to the hardware. Uh, it is estimated that by the, by the time people have finished uh, writing this, uh, where this whole, I, this whole SDSP32 is ready even for makers to create anything useful, it will be anything within six to eight weeks. All right, so, so right now people are just trying to write little little programs to, to, to kind of get started. So if you are like uh, backers of this project, for example, if you like for some Adafruit says that if you are going to buy this, make sure you are open to contribute some of the, 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 the source code or some of the program code so that people around the world can kind of like learn as well as to speed up the, uh, the level of development. All right, so that's all I have uh, for you. So you can actually come over here later to uh, check it out. Um, I actually have an extra board. Okay, if you kind of like say you know you promise you're going to do something awesome with it, uh, it's yours tonight. Tonight. All right. All right. So uh, that's all. Thank you.